Hello, everybody. Once again, Facebook has taken its sweet time, and I have no idea if I'm live or not yet. I'm a little late today because of technical difficulties, so I feel like I want to make sure this is actually working before I spend the next 45 minutes showing you how to make this awesome card, uh, only to find out that none of it actually worked. So I'll, uh, I'll lean into my skill set here and just ramble for a bit while I make sure that this is actually working. So hi, everybody. Welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. I am Tracy, the uh, friendly neighborhood paper pusher, coming to you from beautiful downtown Lawrenceville today. It is, uh, it is nice and white and snowy and beautiful out today. I can see we've been live for, an, for a minute. So <laughs> I leave all heard my rambling. That's how long it took for Facebook to catch up though. Um, I need it to catch up because that's the only place I can figure out how to get the comments. So welcome everyone. Um, I, was, I was getting ready to do this and of course, yes, technical stuff, um, but I solved it. How did I solve it you ask? Because I know you're curious because you know how good I am with technology. How did I solve it? I just kept turning things on and off until it worked. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's about the length of my skill set. Ooh, did you see this? Can you tell the difference? Ooh, a little bit. I have the, my light and I found my little um, remote. I actually originally bought this so that I could put it in the light downstairs. So when I wanted to get my son's attention with his noise canceling headphones on, I could turn the lamp on and off and on and off and he would know. And it worked very effectively. It annoyed him, um, but it only worked until he decided that the answer to me flashing the light to get his attention to get him to come upstairs was to take the bulb out. So it's a great idea if you can prevent that part. Um, but it, did, it does work beautifully to light up this, like, this area. Um, and because it came with the little remote, now I don't even have to like lean over and give you the close-up of things you don't want close-ups of uh, to get you there. So we're all good to go now. <sighs> Settled in, overcome all the technology. Okay, so I was typing on what we were going to do today. And what we're going to do today, oh, look how perfect that is. I have the thing in my hand, but you can't see it because <laughs> my face is in the way. Um, and we're making a tree card. And you're probably thinking, Tracy, you're obsessed with trees. You always make tree cards. But that's not the kind of tree card we're going to make. We're making a pop-up tree card. So we're making uh, this card. And I call it a tree card because I think it looks like a tree. And in this case, what I was aiming for was woodland creatures frolicking in the snow around the tree. <laughs> so that's what I did. So in this case, it literally is a tree, but it also is just, you know, a very cool card. Now, if you pay attention, and we're going to make one from scratch, and with any luck, I will pay attention on the second one. These two snowflakes are actually the only thing keeping it from going in a standard size envelope. Oh, hello, Coral. Now, if I had, if I had done what I know I'm supposed to do, I could have kept everything together and this would have fit in the envelope. But I wanted these snowflakes popping off the tree. Actually, I'm gonna have to shift this a little bit, but this came on after I'd already screwed up by doing those, so I was like, whatever. But normally, if you'll look, if you can keep everything within the confines of the cardboard, or cardstock with maybe just a tiny little bit of overlay, you can actually get this in a standard envelope. Now, in this case, I'll just be making an envelope or I'll just be handing it to somebody, or maybe it'll just sit on my desk. Well, I make another one instead. I did make these. Um, I looked for these this weekend because my mom had requested some cards to send to her friends and she wanted more of a nativity theme to them, which I don't have a lot of nativity stuff. Um, I'm more of a snowflakes and trees and red and green type person. So I had these awesome die cuts though from before and I thought, you know what would be great if I could make this like little scenery. And I, I did take pictures, I'll post them afterwards. Uh, they're retired die cuts, but they're awesome die cuts. So I had made those and sent them to her. And my dad, God love him, uh, one of my biggest card fans, phoned me up afterwards and said, that card you made your mother? That's just perfection. He says, you should do this for a living. So I found it very amusing. 
Um, he does, he has always been a cheerleader, no matter what I've done, but yes, he does like my cards, and he phoned me afterwards, and I thought, oh, for goodness, that's so funny, and here's the thing, these cards are so easy, hello, Nicole, these cards are so easy, as long as you don't get carried away with the decorations, and they're way easier than, um, than they look by this, because when you look at this, you think, ooh, that's got to be complex, it's not, it's quite easy, um, so I had to find the measurements though for it because I'd only made one prior to this weekend. I only ever made one once. And I so I started Googling because I couldn't find my original card. And I Googled cone and triangle and tree and everything. Nothing was coming to me. So I, I had to phone a friend. And uh, turns out if you're Googling this to see other versions of it, um, you will find it under TP card, which also is the right shape. So and then that, that didn't occur to me at the time. But I like to call it a tree card because to me it looks like a tree. In most cases, I'm making a tree. So this is a card flat, lots of decorating. And uh, the only thing you need that is not like in maybe your in your um, card room already is these little Velcro or I'm gonna make the other card with magnet um, little closures so you can make it. Anyways, love these cards, lots of fun to make. So I'm gonna show you how from start to finish. I also did consider on my to-do list today, I thought, well, I'm going live. I have to clean my desk off. I did not clean my desk off, uh, mostly because I was doing lots of other things and getting distracted. And because, let's face it, this is what my desk all, all, always looks like. And when I first set the camera up, you can actually get a wider shot of my desk. <laughs> I realize now the camera screened some of it out. So that cleaned up my desk for me very nicely. Okay, perhaps I could have... Uh, cut something ahead of time, but I didn't. Here's my massive paper cutter on my desk. So I'll just do what I normally do, just move everything over a little bit. Okay, so what we need for this card is three sheets or three pieces that are four by four of our base card stock. So in this case, I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. And you can get, you have leftovers, but you can get them all in one piece. So basically I cut off a four inch strip to begin with. Oops, I forgot which one I cut. Um, and then I just cut off the other one because I'm trying not to waste. <laughs> I cut this piece, I just cut as four inches, and then I'm just going to go trim. It's a little wider than four. I keep doing this, I'll do this like four times because I'm talking and distracting myself. So I'm just going to trim that because this way I have, I like to leave the biggest chunk possible. So this is what's left of a sheet of paper. This is why my desk is a mess because I just keep throwing things over there. Now this one is four inches wide, so I'm just going to go cut myself two more four inch squares. Um, this is easily evergreen cardstock. It's one of the in colors right now. So in colors are only around for a couple of years and then they go away. But I so love this green. Oh, love it. So I'm hoping that about every five or so years, give or take, I think, um, Stampin' Up kind of looks at their colors and make sure they're on trend and which ones have been popular and which ones haven't and does a little bit of a color refresh. And I'm hoping they wait until 2023, which is when this color would be set to retire so that they can decide to keep it as a regular color and not actually retire it. Because, oh man, I love this card stock. Okay, so we've got three pieces that are four by four. I'm gonna take out my scoring tool. And remember, the dark blade cuts, the light blade scores. You don't wanna be making that mistake. And, and because I'm scoring, if I was gonna do a whole bunch of these, I would actually take the cutting blade right out so that I don't screw it up. So as you can see, I am lining up the, on my instructions, I, I put score tip to tip. Now that made perfect sense to me. I'm not sure if it makes sense to everybody else, but it makes sense to me. So what I'm doing is I'm lining the very point, opposite points up in the little groove of my score. And I'm scoring from tip to tip on all three of them. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna cut tip to tip as well, but in this case, we're just scoring. And I have figured out that once you get it, you, you, you have to, you know, landmark with that so that when you cut this thing on, you don't knock it. Like when I was doing it on the weekend, I must have lined the thing up five times because I kept having my fingers too close and then I would go to close this and it would work. So as far back as you can, we'll save you some grief. Okay, oh, here, how well this is out. Okay, now we are gonna cut. So this is our base, that was it. <laughs> then we're going to cut through Magic of TV. Um, a piece that is three and three quarters, and I'll post these measurements afterwards. It's pretty easy though. This is four by four. Everything else is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. 
And then there's one extra piece if you want, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. This white cardstock, oh, and I forgot to put it on the other one, I think. I did. Is just to go in the middle so you have somewhere to write. Uh, and you get lots of options. Now, you also want some pattern paper to go on here. So again, this is also going to be three and three quarters. Now, I, I have seen so many great cards made with scraps of DSP that I'm not worried about the fact that I am not fully utilizing. I picked six by six paper. So I'm going to have lots of leftovers. But believe me, there are many cool cards that are going to be able to be made with these things. So I need two of these squares that are cut as three and three quarters by three and three quarters. If you've ever attended my friend's Vera's Mystery Monday, uh, she'll give you all sorts of ideas for what to do with little chunks of DSP. A lot of the mystery cards have little chunks of DSP and there's all sorts of things you can do with them. Okay, so we have two squares of that. Now, what I will show you is when I did mine, I wanted it, like I said, this was simulating a tree. Um, I can't remember what theme we used it the very first time I made this, but I know it was like birthday or something totally colorful and different. Um, and we didn't put DSP here. I wanted the whole thing covered. So as you can see on this one, I only put a chunk of DSP here. And that, that same little chunk is on all three of these points. It, um, when you put your cards together, you'll notice that all of them are put together the same way. So I put this little chunk here so that when I closed it, it would, it would be covered here, covered here. If not, and I'll show you when we get to the other one, um, you would have just plain cardstock there. Now, that's not the piece of paper I want. Uh, the other option you have is, so mine is cardstock all around. And again, that was by design. I wanted it to look like a tree. Let's see if this just happens to be the right size. Nope. <laughs> that would be too easy. So, you can put cardstock all the way around. You can also put one of these white panels that you cut to put on the inside. That was from the, you know how I know I didn't put it in the other card? It's because I can see the cut pieces sitting on the side of my desk. That's how I know I didn't put it in there. Um, so you can use, oh darn it, see I have all these little scraps. I have no fear of scraps. They will be used for something. Ooh. Okay, cool. Um, yep, should have planned that ahead of time. I thought I had grabbed the right piece of paper, but I didn't. And so now I'm trying to get one that I want to go in there. And all of the strips that are left are two inches wide. And I need one that is two and a quarter. So this will work. Let's so that's the back side. And that's the back side of one of these pieces. All righty. Are, are we still following along? OK, there we go. So I'm going to use this one just to give it a little bit of fancy. So if you would like to make them, and I'll show you the difference before we put this one on, but I'll prep these anyways. So you also need two pieces that are two and a quarter square. And somehow I cut that one of these wrong. That does not match. Hmm. Yeah, that one out afterwards. I think I only need three of them anyways. Okay. So I'm going to move that out of the way because if you're if you're using your if all you have is your trimmer, then keep going with it. But I have a little mini guillotine that I absolutely adore, so I'm going to use it to cut my other pieces of paper. So now these these two pieces of paper that we cut, we are also going to cut the same as we scored the other ones. We're going to cut these though from tip to tip. So we're going to line those up, guillotine down. Now, depending on the pattern of your paper, you might want to keep track of how you cut these and match them so that when you put them around the sides of the tree, um, you don't end up with some like really bad clashing or something. In the case of these ones, they're all just a really cool pattern. They're fairly subtle. I would imagine if you had a bigger pattern or stripes or something like that, it would matter a lot more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I only need three of these and since I cut this piece of paper wrong. The unfortunate part of this that I measured before I made these little triangles the first time, and uh, let's pretend I cut that right and I just cut it in half, is you almost, you can almost get away with a two by two square. There's just this tiny, tiny little corner that shows up with a two by two. So I made it two and a quarter, so I can make that one work. All right, there we go. We're done cutting pieces. 
So we started with our three pieces of cardstock, four by four that we scored down the middle. We cut two pieces of DSP that are three and three quarters by three and three quarters that we cut down the middle. Our one piece of white cardstock that we same dimensions as the DSP, and then a couple little squares. Now this is how quickly this card is going to go together. We're going to fold on the lines we just made. We're going to fold these in half and we're going to score them. And you do want to burnish the edges, or I said score, sorry, burnish. You do want to burnish the edges because it'll give you that nice, oh, hello Tamara. It will give you a nice uh, finished edge. And I do have the bone folder. I think I probably have said this before. I used to use my finger and I would just do this on them uh, until the one time I had ink on my finger and I went like this down the side of a piece of card and smeared ink everywhere. So we don't do that anymore. So this is basically what we're going to do. We've folded them all in half. We're going to take our tree. And you see how quickly this is going to come together? We're going to glue one here. And we're going to glue one here. And then we're going to put our little clasp in the middle. And we're going to have our tree. And that's how quickly these three pieces are going to make that tree. But as you notice, like I said, if we if we just put the DSP, I'm purposely doing this without it being glued, but it would be really nice if the paper would be falling out of my hand. OK, so if we just do with the DSP, then this is what we're going to end up with. We end up with DSP here and a green triangle here. Now, this is not this is not bad. I mean, this is a pretty piece of paper. By the time you're done, you cover most of it up. So if you want to see a bit more of the cardstock, it's totally fine to leave that. Um, on the one card I made, I left one corner blank just so it was really obvious which one had the joint, the, like the catch on it. If you want to make them covered, you need to put, like I said, you need to put a little bit of a triangle on the one side so that when your other piece goes over top of it, Totally not the right way. Just when the other piece goes over top of it, now you have one. So mix and match your DSPs if you want. There is no not actual a rule that says everything has to be the same. Except on my tree, I wanted the look of a tree, and I made it the same color. All the pieces of DSP, but that's fine too, right? These are two colors that sort of go together, or patterns that sort of go together. It's almost like one's a bigger version of the other. Um, if you were using, just, I will glue this down eventually. If you were using um, more solid colors, you would see the difference. Um, and like I said, if you want, you can put your white card stock as well. If you want to be able to write right on the outside of the card and be able to see it. Now, what I did with this, if I had done it correctly on the first one, um, is I did not put the white card stock on the outside. Like I said, I I have my you know, animals having their happy dance around the tree. So all the sides are covered with the same green and then full of nice little animals. And so what the intent was, was on the inside of the card, was to put these green pieces, which I forgot to glue in the first time, in here. So then you could write on the inside of the card. And then when you were done and closed it up, you, you I mean, you'd know it was in there, you'd see it, but you wouldn't see it on your display. So that's what we're going to do with this one. So I doubt anybody is crafting along with me as I go, because if you are, <laughs> that's good luck to you. Um, because I didn't tell you anything ahead of time and I, I tend to just go really quickly, but let's pretend. So now let's say you've picked your paper. What we're gonna do now is put it all together. I'm going to use two different seals. You'll see that as we go. So silicone mat always underneath me so that when I go off the edge of the points, I'm just I'm going off of it onto the silicone, which is much easier to get it off of than the wooden desk underneath. <laughs> Tamara's into the crack again. Now I will show you something before I stick this down again. Um, you know what I just realized? I, I actually put the sentiment on the part with the joint on it. I don't normally do that. Um, you want to try to line your thing up, like center each piece when you go. This one I made very crooked when I did it. One went right to the end because I was using the snail. You might be better off with the white glue; it gives you a little more, um, little more time to shift and adjust. But no matter what, I still keep using this the seal. 
Um, but I went off a little to the side, so my piece is really close to the edge, which means I don't have a nice even border, which drives me nuts. But I did put the adorable fox who's having a nap underneath the tree. In my world, that's exactly what this is. He's napping under the tree. Um, he kind of covers a little bit, so you don't see the transition. But yeah, try to center all your pieces so you get a nice even border as you go around. So I'm going to center on the corners here. I seriously glued that piece of paper to my finger. So we're going to do this, and I'm going to I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to put this opposite color paper. So the one that I screwed up and cut the wrong dimension of that I just fixed is just missing this tiny little notch. <laughs> but I'm confident it's going to work because when I tried this before with the two by two square, it was right here that was missing, not right here. So. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to work. What we're going to do now, we're going to do oops. That's the other bonus to this little map. If you're not paying attention and you don't, uh, when you're using this seal, you want to kind of tip it to, to break the adhesive. It's a nice strong adhesive. If you don't do that and you, and it sort of bounces back a little bit in there, your silicone map is the perfect way to get it started again because it catches. So you can just run a little bit on there and it will start. I just will glue that backwards. Now, if I had glued that backwards, it really wouldn't have been the end of the world. It all is just personal taste, but then we did just have this cool little green corner in one of the corners. Uh, one of the reasons my snowflakes go on the other, on the other one, the reason that it's sticking off, and I knew as soon as I did it that it was not going to be able to fit in the envelope, is because when I tried to pull it off, I ripped the paper underneath. So I left it. Um, <laughs> But I didn't fix that one. But you could attempt to take the paper off if you did glue it on wrong. But just say you did it on purpose. Um, you can alternate these papers. Pretty crowded going down my sidewalk right now. Sorry, I'm easily distracted. Squirrel. Um, you can al alternate these papers so that um, when you look at the tree, they're different. But you're because there's only, if there was four of them, which I might try one of these times, make it more of a cone with four. Uh, you would get alternating, you'd only alternate between two of them, like two of them are going to be the same. So that's why I just choose to make them all the same. Okay. Now, so this was the regular seal that I was using, because I'm just moving paper on. I made this on the weekend. Every time I cut a piece of paper, I went like this 10 times. It was, no matter what I did, I could not get the paper going in the right direction the first time. Okay. So we now have three pieces glued together. Or not glued together, decorated up. Now we're gonna glue them, glue them together. So in this case, I am using my Seal Plus just because this card is gonna get, you can't help it when you get one of these cards, especially if it's the first time you've ever got one, you'll open it and close it, open it and close it, because that's just what you do. So, like I said, this is this is how they're gonna go. This is the fold, and here's the other fold. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna line this piece of card right up against the edge, just, just inside of the fold line. And as you're doing it, you're gonna make sure that you can still fold this one down, right? So this is where we want. So this is what I do. I just go like this and put my finger down. And I'm not putting it on here because it's harder to gauge where to put it. So I'm just going to put the snail here. The reason I'm putting my finger down is because I know not to go lower than that. Because if I do, the glue will stick, or my whatever adhesive will be outside of where I want it to be. And you do want to try to get all the way, that's why we're using the silicone mat, all the way to the very tip. In this case, um, it's angled in the this seal's not, but you have a little bit of time, so you're better off just to add a little extra piece on the top. Now I'll stick one in the middle. Um, because if not, it's not as clean a fold at the top. Um, again, white glue would work for this too, and it would give you probably a little bit more play when you're trying to put them together, but I like to put it on the edge. So I'm lining the point up with my finger, and I'm lining the edge up on the score line. And then I, before I push it down, I'm going to make sure I can fold it by folding it over. And then squish my adhesive. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing this time. Let's see how 
one spare piece there. So again, I'm just putting my finger down so I know where not to glue. I'm going to go like this. For some reason, my, my seal plus is uh, wanting to pull my cardstock off. Once again, I'll just fold that over. So again, I'm starting with my using my finger here as a bit of a guide on the point. Lining up the points, line up against the edge, make sure I can fold it over. Pull that one a little bit, but that's okay. So I did this one as well. All of the other ones I managed to get even, and then there's always one. See, I did the exact same thing on this one. Look how much difference there is between that and that. Opportunity for embellishment. That's what we got going there. Okay, so now our, our guy is put together. So on the first one that I made, I made Velcro. And this time I'm going to use these little magnet dots to seal it. Now, I have, I have some skinnier ones or smaller ones that are really, really thin, but I couldn't find them. That would work as well. Um, you could put them underneath the paper, but I find that if you do it underneath the paper and, and they don't um, adhere well enough, then you, you just make a big mess getting it up. Now, the person who's going to do this needs to kind of know that, hey, this is how this card opens. So I don't think it's the end of the world that they see the magnets. Now, because I just have those stuck to my fingers, which was probably not the best idea, I am going to, they all come um, pre, like pre-sticky. Um, I'm sure there's a better word for that than pre-sticky. <laughs> uh, they're self-adhesive or whatever, but a um, little extra tear tape on the back. That's not going to hurt anybody. So what we're going to do is now you see where the card's going together. Right? So we're on the side where the card's going to go together. So this we want this corner to meet the other one. So I'm going to take this corner first, and I'm going to stick one in it. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to put it just far enough in. I'm going to squish it down really hard. Now I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to stick them together with the magnets. And the magnets never line up perfectly straight. The, I don't know, it's been a long time since high school science. Whatever the ions or whatever it is that sticks together, they're slightly offset. But I think that's fine. If that's where it's naturally going to want to go, don't fight nature. So now we're going to take this. So we've got them stuck together and the adhesive is sticking up. We're just going to fold this guy down. We're going to get it nice and squared and lined up, and then we're going to squish them together. So now our magnets are lined up, and we didn't have to fight with them. So now here's what we've got. So we've got our, our outside of our tree, and we've got our inside of our tree. And this time, because I'm going to try to look like I know what I'm doing, I'm actually going to put the inside back in. Uh, I say that, and then I forget which way goes which. Okay, well, I'll just use this one because it's out. Bit of overkill to put the seal plus on the inside, but that's okay. So depending on how much you decorate the outside of this card, it might be easier to write on it before you do this. But because you have a couple layers of card stuff underneath, I think you'll be able to write. I guess I'll report back because if my mom phones cursing and swearing at me, I'll know that she was not able to write on the cards with you know me, I like I like my uh, dimensionals. So all of the little scenery that I put on the outside of the nativity card is all popped up on dimensionals. Every piece of it, the entire thing around. I don't think I put anything straight onto the cardstock. But like I said, it's fairly thick, so I think you got lots of room. Okay, so now you have somewhere to write. Now again, I think the first one I did, these two sides were decorated. This way. These two sides were decorated. And I think the white panel went on the back. So you could just, you know, pop it open right on the back curve you wanted. But I figured the opportunity to just decorate this thing up, oh, you know, I couldn't pass it up. So I put the white on the inside. So there we go. Ta da! Oops. Maybe it would be a good idea if I make sure the magnet was stuck together. So there's my tree. Um, now you just have to decorate this, <laughs> which, oh, Lord knows, that could take forever. Um, I think when you're going to decorate, in this case, I chose to have the flat side out because I wanted to put this on. You could aim to have it this way, 
do it, don't do what I did on my first card though, and don't put the, the closure because that's the least clean side. Maybe don't put that at the front of the card. So in this case, I'm going to go for uh, the other thing you'll notice is the Velcro, the, the difference in the Velcro, there's a bigger gap there. That's part of the reason you don't want to necessarily put that right in front. Um, with these little magnets, there's much less of a gap, but you still kind of want to pay attention. So I'm going to put this in the back and I'm going to make my tree like this. No, I'm not going to do that. That seemed like a good idea until I realized I'll never be able to fasten my sentiment on the way I want to. I am currently obsessed with this sentiment that says marry everything. So when I made the other one, I just made a couple extras. My, my plan with this to decorate this tree um, really was to try not to put as much stuff on it as the last one. Yep, who am I kidding? I can hear you all saying that. Um, <laughs> but I was just gonna, if they're all stuck now, I'm trying to use my left hand. I was just gonna make it into like a literal tree and put some little foliage pieces on. So the, the, these little pieces are left over from attempting to make, um, I'm not sure. Oh, I was making the, the big card with the outside. So it's the, the huge die, which I have totally forgotten the name of. Thank you, Farah. I see the super cute. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the back of my head because that's what everybody wants to see. Bah, bah, bah. I have no idea what it's called, and I'm totally missing on where it is. Okay, so <laughs> anyways, it's a huge die um, with with the foliage all around, and all I did was cut one big square out and then went around and cut all the pieces off. So I'm going to uh, <clears throat> oops, I'm just gonna put a few little pieces in here like this. And I'm going to just make it into a bit of a tree and decorate it up. And then I will take a picture and we'll post it with pictures of the other completed card. But I don't figure because I just realized that my my little case that had all the extra pieces in it uh, is not where I thought it was. And given the state of my desk right now, that might take me a few more minutes to find. Um, here's the other idea that I had that I, I never ended up using on the first one. but. This is gold vellum paper that I used the snowflake set, the new snowflake set that was in this year. Let's see if I can do this without knocking everything on the floor. Called Mary Snowflakes that came with the dies. Um, and this is just such a pretty die. But I figured if you wanted to, you could also make the snowflake go on the top and it would almost look like a Christmas tree, but yet it's still a snowflake. So this tree may have some gold on it. I still have not used these uh, the gold holly leaves I might have to bling it out with a little bit of gold I was going to try to use these gingerbread oh, yep that's what I just did okay I was going to say these gingerbread things are a pain in the butt they're a bigger pain in the butt now um I was going to try to use them as decorations on my tree but I, I will admit I am not very happy with how tiny the pieces are and how hard they're to glue on um, and now because I'm so dainty I have less of them to use, but that's okay. But I might try to use that and, and put some of those little things glued onto my tree and embellish it up a little bit. So I would love it, i like clean up my desk, if, if somebody else would attempt to make a tree and post some pictures as well, because they're lots of fun and it'll give lots of people ideas on the, how to decorate the part. I will post the dimensions for how I made that. <laughs> Excuse me while I clean my desk up. Um, I have a bunch of them stuck in the trim on my desk. There we go. Uh, I will post the dimensions in case you didn't catch that as I was ripping through them at the beginning. And I will decorate up this tree and send a picture. I'll finish it up right away. I just, uh, I won't make you sit there and watch me as I chase around trying to find the die cuts that I had already done. But yes, there you have it. The tree card. And, as, and in the words of my father, it is perfection. <laughs> so there you go. Folds flat. Uh, like I said, when you're doing your decorations, do not do what I do and stick your leaves or your snowflakes sticking way off the edge or you will not be able to fit it in a standard envelope. This, this other one that I do, I will show you in the picture that it will fit in a standard envelope because I will do it properly. So go forth and create. Enjoy making your tree. I look forward to seeing the pictures. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, and hanging in there while I rambled on. Um, much appreciated. Marry everything, everybody. Take care.
Bye.